degree of freedom manipulator. So what we have here is a Stanford manipulator. Uh, let's take a look at the schematic here. So we have uh, six joints. The first two joints are the relative joints, and the third joint is a prismatic. And four, five, six uh, are again the relative joints. So the four, five, six joints here are nothing but the spherical wrist, right? So using the spherical wrist, you get the orientation of the detector. <coughs> So um, also take a look at the DH table here. We have uh, six variables, um, theta1 um, and theta2 for the, uh, th these two are the variables for the first two joints. And since the third joint is a prismatic, we have uh, a D3 variable here in D3 star. And then again, same goes with uh, fourth, fifth, and sixth joint, at the value joints variables. And we have uh, an end detector here with a certain distance of D6. So uh, we have distance for that. And I'm going to give values for D2 and D6 here. So let's take um, D2 as 4. D6 as 2. Okay. So let's try to do the same thing using um, the links and the serial uh, link command. Okay. Uh, try to do with me this time, okay? And if you have any questions, just feel free to interrupt me and we can go over that. So, uh, I'm clearing everything. So, for the link one, can you give me the parameters here? So here, uh, again, uh, just to remind you the sequence, it is theta d a alpha. So theta in the first um, link is a variable, so we don't have a value for it, so let's put a zero. So D is again zero here, A is zero, alpha is negative 90. So it's uh, negative pi by two. And then the last uh, variable for this link function will be uh, either zero or one based on revolute and prismatic. In this case, it's revolute, so I'm gonna put zero here. So that is our link one. So same goes with link two. The only difference is we have a, a, a value of four for D. So I'm gonna put uh, four here instead of uh, zero. And then we have a positive 90 degrees. And then this is link two. So we have two links now. And the third link, L3, So theta is zero. Uh, D is again zero here because it's a prismatic joint. We are not going to pass any values. A is zero. Alpha is zero. And uh, what should I put for the last value here? Either zero, one, one, right? Because it's a prismatic joint. So we have L three. And now let's do it for L four. So. Theta is a variable. You D4 is and B5 into right? I'm sorry? B4 and B5. It should be alpha 4 and alpha 5, right? They are Minus 90, 90. That's right, I'm sorry. Thank you. So these 90s and 90s are here. Imagine that these two uh, joints are actually together. They are sharing the same center, just okay. like spherical wrist. Okay, I'm uh, drawing the spherical wrist with uh, you know certain distance here, but in fact they are actually sharing the same center. They don't have distances between them. So link four, theta d is zero here. A is zero. Alpha is negative pi by two. And this is a revolute joint. And uh, link five. Again, theta zero. D zero. A alpha. Revolute joint. And L six. Theta 
parameter and we have a value for d which is 3 a 0 alpha 0 revolute joint all right now we have our six links so uh, I'm gonna use a serial link uh, command and uh, combine all of these six links and make a serial manipulator so there is actually a name for that schematic so uh, can you recall uh, what kind of manipulator will have uh, this kind of uh, structure this is called a Stanford manipulator okay you need to uh, remember that so yeah that's called Stanford just like our Stanford city. So I'm going to create a Stanford variable here. And then pass all the links that we have created, L1, L2, L3, L4, L5, and L6. And there is our DS table. So one thing that you guys need to uh, remember when you are creating this uh, DS table in MATLAB is whenever you have a prismatic join, you need to specify the limits of uh, that particular joint. For a revolute joint, there is always a uh, fixed limit. A, a joint can never go more than 360, 360 degrees by default. So uh, for a prismatic joint, you know, we are going to set uh, certain limits. So our prismatic joint here is link 3, L3. So the way that you set limit for uh, that particular joint is this way. Uh, use a dot and use Q limit. Q actually stands for a variable for that particular joint. And uh, Lynn is nothing but the limit here. And I'm going to pass two values. So uh, the minimum value that it can have and the maximum value that can, it can have. So I'm going to say the minimum it can have is 0. The maximum it can have is uh, 10. So that is the limit for the prismatic joint. So D3 will never go less than 0 or more than 10. So now we have um, limit set for this link 3. Let's try to build the serial link manipulator one more time. All right. So don't forget to uh, do the serial link command after you have um, set the limits. Otherwise, you'll get errors later. How was it? Q so uh, do L3 dot Q limit. And then uh, pass a uh, matrix of two values, uh, the minimum value and the maximum value. Zero to ten. Yeah, zero to ten. Professor, what does standard represent? Sorry? What does standard represent? So uh, our third link is actually a prismatic joint, right? So we need to specify how far our prismatic joint can extend. So we are saying that okay, our link three shouldn't go more than ten units, or it shouldn't go less than zero units, which actually makes sense. Right? So we, we put zero and ten. And then uh, yeah, Stanford. What uh, other command I go? The Qlim command? Yeah. So once our uh, Stanford manipulator is created, we can use a uh, plot function to actually see how the manipulator uh, will be when given um, the values for the angles and uh, the prismatic joint. So use the plot function, plot, and then uh, use the Stanford manipulator, and then 
pass the values for the variables uh, that we have here. So when I say uh, the values for the variables, uh, we need to pass values for theta 1, 2, d3, theta 4, 5, and 6. So let's put any values. So for theta 1, I'm going to do pi by 2, which is that I'm going to join, and uh, pi by 3 for uh, theta 2, and d3, we can have uh, 6. That should fall under 0 to 10. That's the limit of the prismatic joint. And we have theta 4. Um, can be pi by 4. Pi by 4. Pi by 3. I'm just giving some random angles and um, random uh, prismatic joint lengths just to see how the manipulator will be. Workspace. So uh, we need to also mention the workspace variable here. So the workspace is nothing but when you are actually creating a graph or when you are plotting a graph, um, just like how we have specified limits for our prismatic joint like 0 and 10, for the workspace we need to also specify that, okay, show this manipulator in a workspace of uh, x-axis where it is negative 10 to 10 and uh, y-axis should have again the lens of negative 10 to 10. And uh, we will see how uh, your workspace actually uh, will be created based on these values. So let's just put uh, negative 10 and 10 for the x values. And for y axis, and I'm going to just put the same, negative 10 and 10. And for the z axis, negative 10 and 10. This, these values are nothing but the size of the plot that we are going to create. So if you are going to put uh, negative 100 to 100, your graph will be so big and your manipulator will be so small. So that's why I'm just going to uh, use these values for now. So if everything goes well, you should be seeing this. So notice that here we have the limits, uh, negative 10 to 10 for the z-axis, negative 10 to 10 for y, the same with x-axis. That's what the workspace variable is. And the way that this manipulator is um, currently um, transformed is based on the values that we have passed to the plot function. Right? So I have passed some random values to uh, theta 1, 2, d3, 4, 5, and 6. And that's how a manipulator uh, looks like when, when given those values.